Hello, welcome to Sunday, aka Fake Tuesday, here on Vlogging Life. I got up about an hour and a half ago. That's weird. She almost looks comfortable there. Almost looks comfortable. Yep. Anyway, so today's my second day back to work since I have my little weekend. It was alright. It was alright. Throwing a shirt in the laundry here. Gonna have to set up more shit for laundry and run another load tonight. We need more pants and shirts. I'm thinking that we're gonna start tackling that project. Um. I just need to clear it all out. I don't have an axe, that's the problem. But if I can dig all the sand out of the way, hand blast it with water and clean off the roots and all that, then I can borrow dad's axe whenever he gets it back and we can just beat the shit out of them roots and then rip that off the freaking tractor if we have to because that tree stump has got to go. So what I'm thinking is, I don't even know what time it is right now. I don't have my watch on or my phone on me. And none of the clocks in the house are set, so we had a power failure again. Uh, it's 1.48 p.m. I gotta leave in an hour and 45 minutes. Go! Just gonna get my watch on and my phone in my pocket. And uh, we're gonna go out there and play. Let's see if I can find my long-handled round mouth. We'll be good to go, and there it is. So I'm gonna grab that, and uh, we're gonna get out there and fucking bang out some dirt. I apologize for the wind in, in advanced here, but uh, I'm gonna show you what I was doing in case you didn't catch on. Basically, I tried to dig up as much dirt as possible and made that pile there. 
And next step is, is you rinse off all the roots, pushing all the loose dirt off of them so you can expose them. As you can see there, Dad already did a part. He came over and, and did this area here and washed it all out. Now I don't have much time. And what I'm waiting for is this here to drain out. I guess I could shovel it out, but fuck it. And uh, then we'll attack her again. And we'll keep doing it until we get all these roots exposed. And then we'll attack it with an axe and uh, bang the some bitch out. We're gonna hook it up to a tractor, pull her out of there, and probably fire it underneath that tree to rot. But as for me right now, I need some food. So you guys remember last year, the video, I think it was on Adrian's channel, might have been on mine, I am not sure. I think it was on mine, I don't think Adrian was making video that day. I can't remember now. Basically, we came back from mini biking, and then he found a mini bike outside of town. And we went and picked it up and he finally got his own mini bike. Okay, well that mini bike he got, it had a dicked out uh, gear reducer. Now, oh, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm totally making an egg. But um, it had a dicked out uh, gear uh, reducer. So he ended up ordering a lot of the parts to rebuild his gear reducer that came on the bike, only to realize that the jack shaft in the back was bent. So he had to buy a whole new unit anyway. So he found one on there for, I can't remember the price, but it was an upgraded version of the gear reducer that I have on black bike. It basically, it was better. It had uh, a higher gear ratio, so you, you, they said you could theoretically, you get more torque off the line and more top end, so I'm not sure how that exactly works. It's not a torque converter, it's just a gear reducer. Sure enough, he gets that back, he installs it, and then all, he, all the parts he bought come in. You know, the chain and the torque converter, or the clutch, sorry, all that shit. And he didn't know what to do with it. Well, I ended up buying the clutch off of him. Turns out he still has the chain. And turns out the chain doesn't fit on his new gear reducer. So I'm going to end up buying that off him too as a spare for mine. Which will be awesome. Because you all know how I love having spare parts for this kind of shit. Hmm. Scampers was there. I'm going. I'm over here at the stove making my egg. Yeah, get my shit ready. Scampers is over here lurching towards the camera with her paw cocked, ready just to clap it. I don't know where she went though. She's sneaky that one. She's sneaky. Oh, well, check it out. Last night I had a uh, spontaneous burst of cleansing, so I fucking completely vacuumed this room out. Well, as much as I could. Yep. I'm gonna have to empty that bucket. It's full of Oreo. But uh, yeah, we cleaned there. We did the bathroom carpet. I didn't do the entrance way yet, but I'm going to probably tonight. Another thing I want to do tonight is shave my head. I'm starting to look ridiculous. Well, I always look ridiculous, but it's starting to get a little worse. Anyway, I'm going to go eat my food and uh, go from there. So we'll talk to you guys in a bit. Oh yeah, about that whole shit about the uh, chain and stuff. Basically, Adrian's gear reducer, it uh, doesn't work with the chain that comes stock on the mini bikes because he needs a smaller style chain. So, not a big deal, not a big deal. He's going to sell me that chain, but all I need is the master link. So my plan tomorrow is, is to go to this place here in town called H.E. Browns. They're not open on Sundays, so today's out. I'm going to bring just the master link with me and see if they can get me a clip. If they can, right on. We just save that chain. If they can't, Fuck sakes, we're dicked. But uh, we'll figure it out. We'll get it going. And uh, hoping she's going to be good. Hope everything's going to work out. We're going to have ourselves an awesome fucking bike. And this summer we'll be able to get some serious mini biking in. My goodness, I need a haircut. <laughs> she looks like a sausage with a paw. Who's my little sausage? Who's my little sausage? Very cute. Why? Oh, looks like we got something else on the lawn. Yeah, every day. More shit, freak sakes. Looks like a, looks like a tied off garbage bag. Could be a tarp. Probably not. Looks like a garbage bag. I just realized what the hell this is. Okay. This is not buffalo shit. It's totally from me mowing the lawn and not picking up the clippings and the clippings bunching up into the hillside and then decomposing over the winter and turning into what looked like freaking caribou shit. But it's not caribou shit, so we're okay. Um, I'm probably going to use that to fill in the hole, but I'm going to have to get more dirt for sure because... I shit my pants and uh, that's a huge stump in there so it's taking up a lot of inventory space that I will not have the soil to cover so we'll have to either grab soil from somewhere in the yard or buy a couple bags or get a load or something and drop it in there and then be done with it. I know if I can convince dad to hook the trailer up to his car and drive up to the dump you can pay five bucks and fill the trailer up with as much soil as you can carry. Problem is is dad's trailer is one of those it uh, doesn't have solid walls on it it's got like a plank of wood and like pipes together and stuff so there's openings but but I think if we drop a tarp down and like kind of coat the whole trailer bed with a tarp, then he could easily do that. 
and then uh, we could just friggin get them to bring it here and I can move the Trans Am out of the way and you can just back the trailer right up to the stump and just put the trailer in dump mode and dump all the dirt into the hole and then we'll pack her down and plant some seeds and it'll be like there was never a stump there but that won't be happening today because oh I gotta work this bump good yeah, boy now she looks like a popple what to do you mean? Meow. Yeah, pet your bum. Who's a kitten? Who's a kitten? Who's a da bobos? Gee, I wonder why she doesn't like the freaking camera on her. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we're gonna go off to work now. I'm gonna grab stupid, let him outside real quick. And I'm gonna go check out that thing in the backyard real quick too. Alrighty. Let's see what this shit looks like now. They're pretty much all drained out already. So, you know, if I wasn't working today, Totally come back with the shovel, clear all this out, clear all that out, you know, get it all ready to go again and blast her again. But we'll take her day by day and go from there. Oh, he totally kangarooed up, dropping a toadstool. Freak, yeah, freaking dog shit everywhere. I'm gonna have to grab my rake and rake it all up and then pitch it in a bag and fire it in the garbage. Holy shit, it's like 7,000 million degrees in here right now. Give or take 7,000 million degrees. Don't need that on, that's for sure. This is that cell phone tripod mount thing I got with my monopod. I was trying something yesterday, but my phone kept turning off for some reason, so I gave up on it. Anyway, this has got to come off because the camera's got to go on there. And let's do a draft to work. Taking the same path I always do to go to the same place I always go five times a week. Mother friggin' work. Oh well, it is what it is, right? So I gotta pay the bills somehow. That's a cute little pug back there. Huh. I thought that was that pug. There's a... Oh, look at that little desk. That's pretty neat. Huh. It's like all old-fashioned and shit. But uh, the, the, back in the day, there was this old lady who had a pug, and she'd be walking it on the street, and every time a car passed, the fucking dog would tear off after the car, trying to bite the tires and stuff. I don't understand why it had such a death wish, because... If it ever would have succeeded, man, it would have had a bad time, that's for sure. I remember we were going to my buddy's house, uh, there's two ho two or three houses before his, there was this dog there named Cruiser, and every time you pass by the house, this dog would come tearing off after your car. So the one day, I saw him doing that, and I was like, I wonder what would happen if, and I just friggin' brake checked the dog. Totally slammed on the brakes, and I heard, the dump and the back into my car and a yelp the dog came barreling at me full speed couldn't hit the brakes and just smashed into my car unfortunately he didn't have insurance so I couldn't really freaking put a claim on it yeah that's what I find funny about dogs you know is they're so brave against things that can kill them and they're so scared of things that won't like the vacuum the push broom my cat <laughs> Then again, scampers probably would kill Oreo, so that's probably not a fair assumption to make. Yeah, today so far was not a bad day. Like, we got a little bit of work done around the house. You know, I keep chipping at that every once in a while throughout the week. Should be able to get her nice and cleared out, and then whenever I can get Dad's axe, if I can't, I'll just go to Crappy Tire and buy one. You know, they got their job mate brand of axes, which is pretty much pig iron junk. But seeing how I'm using it for one job and one job only, and that's taking that tree down, or sorry, taking that stump out. I don't see what the big deal is. Should be all right. Yeah, that stump's gotta go. That thing's been in there for what, two years now? Three years, forever? It's always been there, because that's, when I bought the house, there was an apple tree there. And uh, it got struck by lightning. Well, we had this thing in North Bay called a microburst. It was like some super mega heavy winds. And uh, it was like July, like one month prior to me buying the house. And there was a Manitoba maple in the front yard where the Trans Am's pretty much parked. And then there's another one off to the side where there's still a stump there. And that stump's massive. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do about that one. I was thinking about getting people to come over with those, uh, those grinders like they did with the neighbor's pine tree. And just fucking sap one. But uh, anyway, uh, there was an apple tree back there. Microburst ripped the apple tree down. And it also ripped the Manitoba maple out of the front yard onto my garage. Well, my, the owner of the house's garage at the time. And I remember I was driving around after it all happened. Like, I was at the ex's parents' house. We are just hanging out. And all of a sudden it happened. And then we looked outside. Like, you couldn't see anything during the microburst. There was literally a white wall of destruction. But it lasted, like, 15, 20 seconds. It was like, what bam done destruction 20 seconds enough time to knock out every power system in North Bay knock out all the phones in North Bay 
just caused major anarchy in North Bay. So I'm thinking, I'm like, holy fuck, you know, we better go for a drive. I want to go see if my shit's okay. So we went back to my parents' house, and uh, there was dad's tree in the front yard got mangled. Um, there was uh, the tree in the backyard got torn up a bit, but it was still standing, so we left it alone. Trans Am was untouched, and I'm like, well, let's go take a rip by the new house, because I already bought the house. Closing date was August 1st. So let's go, let's go take a look by the house. We get there and there's this fucking Manitoba maple just draped across the garage and I'm like, oh no. And then the owner's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, oh, not too bad. I'm like, tell me you're gonna have this cleaned up. And he's like, what? Why, why? And I'm like, well, I'm taking over this house April or August 1st. And he's like, well, sorry to say, bud, but this is gonna end up being your problem. He goes, I don't have time to do with this. And I said, well, okay, well, we'll see what we can do about that. So. I called my lawyer and said, listen bud, the microburst threw a friggin' tree on top of the garage and uh, that's not going to be my problem when I move in August 1st. And he goes, nope, that's not going to be your problem. I said, so what do we do here? And he goes, well, he goes, let me call the guy and we're going to tell him what we're going to do. And basically they're going to push the closing date ahead to give him enough time to cut the tree down and get it all sorted. And let me tell you, he made it his priority to get that tree down before August 1st because I had to go over with the lawyer and do an inspection to make sure I agreed to take the house as it was or have Buddy knock off more money off the price because there was cleaning to be done. So that was the other thing he told him was if he takes over the house as it is, he goes, you're not getting 100000 you're getting 90000 and Buddy was kind of pissed. So of course he jumped on it and said, frig it, I'm just going to bang out that tree and go from there. And if I would have known how much money people would pay for firewood, I wouldn't have given away that other Manitoba maple. Like we literally, like my, uh, my dad's buddy knows how to fall a tree. And this is the one on the side where that old silver trailer used to be. Not where my entranceway is. That one fell in the microburst. This one here was on the side where... Like where the kitchen window hangs out, where Scampers always goes and eats. And there was another one there, and you see the stump all the time. I need my longtime viewers know about that. But anyway, uh, he knew how to fall trees, so he came over and he helped us fall the tree. And we borrowed my uncle's wood chipper so we could grind up all the branches in the, in the sawdust. And everybody in the neighborhood wanted the sawdust for I don't know what. So a bunch of people took some. We still had a lot left over, which turned out to be compost in the back turned into dirt and then grass grew out of it so I just left it be and it worked so right on yeah it was pretty dick like chopped up all the wood and that and I'm like what am I gonna do with all this wood like I didn't know what to do and like we had I don't know how much wood we had like we had a fair sized pile I can't tell you like a quarter or anything because I don't really remember it that well but it was a pretty good chunk like it was a good I'd say like a six and a half foot box full load like for a pickup truck you could probably fill a six and a half foot box and like we chopped it all down and then we cut it up into 12 uh, and into like foot long pieces. Some people like them 16 inches, but we did them in 12 inch pieces for freak's sake. Chopped them all up, we didn't split them, like we just chopped them up into logs. Whoever grabbed them could split them themselves, freak that noise. And then we just piled them neatly at the end of the driveway and uh, the neighbor at the time comes out and he goes, you wanna get rid of that wood quick? And I'm like, yeah, sure, if you wanna take it. He goes, oh no, I have no use for it. He goes, we just put a sign on it that says, $5 all the wood you can take. And I went, okay, I was like, I was gonna put free wood and just let him take it. But I, I put five dollars, all the wood you could take. Well, sure enough, that night, three o'clock in the morning, um, I was still sleeping downstairs because we haven't had uh, the, the, the lighting set up upstairs and my bed wasn't in yet, so I was still sleeping on a futon downstairs. <laughs> it's three in the morning, I see the lights light up at the front door and I'm like, oh, what's going on? I look out and there's a pickup truck totally stealing all the wood and not even leaving five dollars. And I was like, you know what, fuck it, I don't even want the $5, I just wanted the wood gone. Next morning I woke up, went outside, there wasn't a trace of wood, there wasn't a chip on the ground <laughs> where that friggin' pile was. So, yeah, people love wood, because it's great to burn, I guess. So yeah, a little story time in a drive, I guess, eh? Yeah, fun stuff. But, uh, yeah, I used to have three trees on that prop, well, I used to have four trees, theoretically, because that oak in the back, but I used to have three trees. Uh, three other trees on that property and we took down the second Manitoba maple because it just uh it was interfering with the power lines like it was growing into the power lines and stuff and I was like yeah that's got to go and like I said my dad's buddy he does that for a living he follows trees so he knew how to like take it down without banging out the hydro line and getting himself all shocked out and shit so that was awesome we took her down and chopped her up put it down the road and 
Somebody took it and burnt the shit out of it. Because what else could you do with wood like that? You're not going to make yourself a log cabin, that's for sure. And then the one in the backyard, they already cleaned that one up. And the one that was leaning on the garage, they already cleaned that one up. So all in all, not bad. Just got to get this stump out of the yard and maybe find a dick who can come over with a, a tree grinder and just grind that stump down to nothing. And then life will be glorious. I don't even know why I'm wearing a jacket right now. This is ridiculous. I'm sweating my tits off. Or for that matter, why I'm wearing my seatbelt right now. We're parked. Car's not even on, for big sakes. Just roll down another window, get some more air in here. Oh, I'm sweating my nipples off. Yeah, she's a warm one today. It was uh, apparently 12 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty nice. Pretty nice indeed. I'm, I'm digging this warmer weather. It's making me want to do more stuff outside. So yeah, I'm going to leave the vlog at that for now. I don't know, maybe I'll make another vlog tonight. If there's something to talk about, probably not, because it's Sunday and it's going to be another slowest frig day today. Thank God I got some stuff to watch. I got Smackdown and all that shit to keep me occupied while we wait for customers to call in, but I have a feeling we'll be waiting a while. But anyway, thanks for watching. Like, favorite, comment. As you notice, I took the little warning out of the video in the past two, and uh, hopefully I can leave that out and people aren't stupid, but if people start getting stupid, I'm going to have to drop the warning in. It's just the way she goes, you know. But uh, like, favorite, comment, all that nonsense, and until next time, people, it's all about the numbers.